Welcome everybody. Uh, so good to see you. We've got a good turnout today. Um, I'm just going to very quickly introduce myself to get started. My name is Katie Oje, and I am the Community Resource Navigator with Bainbridge Island Senior Center. I also work with island volunteer caregivers. Um, I'm so happy to have uh, some guests with me today, and we are going to be talking about fall prevention and in-home safety. Uh, people may not know this, but this is actually Fall Prevention Awareness Week. So we're gonna learn some uh, great information and tips. Um, I'd like to start by prevention, or excuse me, by um, introducing Janine Cordemanche from the Bainbridge Island Fire Department. Uh, she is our risk reduction coordinator. And I also have with me Julie Stone. Julie, if you could give a little wave. Um, and Irene Herman from the Independent Living Program at HRV. And so I'm going to just go ahead and quickly let uh, Janine uh, say hello to everybody, quickly introduce herself um, and her program. And then I'm going to have her, she's going to talk to us at the end um, of the presentation. Um, and then I'll have uh, Irene and Julie go ahead and jump in. They're going to show us a, a little video and then uh, do a slide for us today. Uh, we will have time at the end to take questions. And of course, uh, for anyone who's not familiar, there is uh, the opportunity to type in questions as well. So it's usually located at the upper right hand side of your screen uh, and you can do a little chat there. Um, and one thing just to keep in mind, um, as you can imagine, uh, things have changed a little bit with some of these uh, programs, as uh, as you can imagine with COVID, uh, things things have been switched up a little bit. And so I will have folks talk about that. But Janine, if you just wanna go ahead and quickly say hello to everyone so people see where you are. Hey, thank you, Katie. So again, my name is Janine Cordemanche and I'm the, uh, the Risk Reduction Coordinator for the Bainbridge Island Fire Department and it's nice to see you all today. Um, I will be following uh, Julie and um, Irene's presentation. Basically, I'll just be providing you with some fire department statistics and uh, reinforcing some of the great messaging that they're gonna have uh, for you today. Uh, we do have home safety inspection program, um, although during COVID that's been suspended it may take a few months to we'll be able to go back into your home to do those. Um, but that being said, I'm still a good resource and um, clearly you have um, online ability so we can even do a, a virtual inspection um, or meet this way if that's helpful. So um, yeah, the program that I would ordinarily be uh, promoting again is suspended in person, but um, we can we are learning new ways of, of doing things these days. So thank you. Perfect, thank you, Janine. Um, and now I'll go ahead and have Julie and Irene jump on. And uh, again, they can do a um, just a quick description of their program, and then we'll go ahead and have you guys show us a video. Sure, well, and I think I lost Julie. Um, I don't see her on here right now. So I hate to do this i might i think she was trying to call me earlier so i might have to call her in a minute and see if she needs help but that said hello i'm irene herman i'm with housing resources bainbridge with the independent living program and um we're going to be talking a little bit about what our program does um with the community and how we you know address fall prevention and um yeah, we've got a little presentation and a little video for you guys today. Um, how about I play this video, which is a nice introduction to the topic of fall prevention. It kind of hits on all the uh, interrelated components that make fall prevention and all the players involved. So um, I'll give Julie a call. Julie, read it. Read will call Julie, <laughs> but I will start this presentation or I'll start the video while that's happening. Um, this video is a trailer and it's uh, a trailer for a play that um, 
this one woman wrote about fall prevention, the sexy topic of fall prevention, you know, and um, she was thinking to herself, you know, no one's going to want to see a play about fall prevention, but this is kind of a promotional video as to why you might want to see one. So let me share my screen here. I hope the senior center might someday want to do this play. And let me get this going. Thanks for your patience, you guys. Alrighty, I think I've got that. Fabulous. Let me start from the beginning. Even in, even in old age, we still want to learn, we still change, we, we still adapt. And I wasn't seeing this on stage, so um, that one that was so bad, I just said, I can write a better play than that. And I did. You are about to enter a new dimension in live theater. I work with Better Living for Seniors and Fall Prevention, and I really think you need to write a play about fall prevention thinking to myself, oh yes, everyone will want to come see a play about fall prevention. You will meet Claire, a woman you might describe as just as normal as you and me, although perhaps a bit more strong-willed. So I started a theater company. I was 70. Who knew? There are real people on stage acting out real scenarios that ring true. We see a lot of hip fractures, we see wrist fractures, we see head injuries, bleeds inside the head, a lot of major injuries that take away a lot of uh, the person's ability to live alone, a person's ability to live without pain. And so that, that's a major interest to, to me as a physician because my whole goal is to have patients live healthy and happy lives. Oh, I'm I have walked over that Maybe you should take I see Exercise and physical activity when prescribed at the right intensity and with the right combination of, of activities is really very valuable and, and appropriate to help mitigate some of those changes. It just made me stop and think about my own situation is how she came through to me and what I would do if I was Claire. You think I'm old? You think I'm going to fall? And then at the end, they're telling their kids, well, I do this, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do this. And, and they're making their decisions themselves, and it's not someone else telling them to do it. So I have changed my life quite a bit. There's a lot of things I don't do anymore. I'm tempted sometimes, like I had to change this life up here on this thing, and I, I take for one step, and I shouldn't have done that, because <laughs> I promised her I wouldn't because the result of falling are so are so overwhelming you know so i'm not i'm not, do, I'm not, I'm not going to do that anymore but there there is a lot we can do to prevent falls they don't have to happen uh, some will but we can do a lot to prevent most of them so yeah i love that trailer i love that play too it's called um denying gravity um <laughs> kind of a play on defying gravity um and i also apologize i'm house sitting there's a parrot in the background um so i will go and close that door when i have a minute so these are the statistics um for washington state um you know the things that are most recently available um and uh, that, uh, you know, the video we just watched about um, that play, Denying Gravity, kind of relates to, you know, um, why do we talk about fall prevention in the first place, right? So these statistics, one in three Washington residents over the age of 65 fall each year. Um, in 2016, um, you know, there were 19,000 hospitalizations for falls among adults 65 and over. 
Um, this next, next uh, statistic, um, the total number of deaths from falls has more than doubled in 15 years. Um, and that is more, it's not because people are falling with more frequency, it's that there are more people in this age group at this point in time, um, you know, who are all experiencing falls, right, in, at these rates. And then lastly, um, the age group 60 and over on Bainbridge has increased over 80% in the last 20 years. Again, just because we are seeing this, you know, um, aging population that's a large, you know, um, uh, aging over the years. And please, anybody just stop me at any point with a question or a comment, you know, um, Janine, you as well, or Katie, yeah, or Reed, anybody, anybody pop in. Because <laughs> I was supposed to be ping-ponging back with, and forth with Julie. So then let's say we fall, what is the cost, right? So we've got reasons why we wanna prevent falls, um, but just to explore this possibility, what would it cost? And so this statistic, the most recent one from 2012 is saying at least at least $34,000. And we're gonna assume that you know it's, it's more than that now for sure. Um, this link here, which I will send to read at the end of this presentation, is I love this site. Um, here they have this interactive map and they give you the monthly costs of the national averages of costs for different types of um, care. So, you know, over here we've got in home care around 4,000. Again, this is a national average. Um, assisted living, nursing home. Let me zoom in on the Bremerton. This bird. I'm gonna have to close his door soon. All right, here we're in Bremerton, Washington. So it's more expensive than the national average, right? Um, so just to to get a sense of why we want to prevent falls and you know avoid these costs if we can, right? Maintaining independence in the home rather than becoming dependent, right? If we can avoid that. So these are in-home care costs. Again, these are estimates. Um, assisted living facilities, you know, or adult day health care. Um, a nursing home facility, of course, is the most expensive. And so, yeah, you can take a look, you know, at any part of the country with this. So let's hop back. Oops, I'm sorry. And then the, the greatest cost is, again, like we're saying, this loss of independence, and we can't put a price on that. Um, it's just invaluable. All right. What is the independent living program first, right? We're, it's, um, I didn't even explain it because it just takes a couple minutes. So um, we serve specifically Bainbridge residents um, and, you know, we are accommodating physical limitations and helping people to rehabilitate at home. Um, we do that by addressing health and safety concerns in the home through home modifications. Um, so examples of that, you know, are um, putting some grab bars in the bathroom, um, taking a shower, removing shower doors, for example, is another one, um, giving somebody more room to access their um, shower and tub, things like that. Um, physical modifications to the home that can reduce the risk of falls. Um, and we also refer out to other organizations such as IVC. Um, for for other needs that we might not address in our program. And again, the goal is to help community members maintain independence in their homes. This is a picture of my stepson and my dad over here. All right, so what would a project look like with independent living if you, um, if we took on a home modification for you? So for qualifying residents, um, we would, you know, set up a meeting. You don't, we don't need to qualify you first, but we'd set up a meeting first just to talk about what the needs are um, and what might have, you know, changed recently in a client's life that needs addressing. Um, then HRB or the Independent Living Program coordinates a home safety evaluation with an occupational therapist. Um, so we're getting, you know, professional input on, um, what they see as needed for modifications in the home based on observations in the evaluation. Um, and then HRB, uh, we, propose, we make a proposal of, you know, the modifications within our budget um, that would, you know, be helpful or applicable to a client or a situation. 
And then we go through the process of hiring that contractor, right? It's um, it's not like we're passing the um, the coordination of the project onto the client or anything like that. So we see it to the completion of the work. And um, this uh, on the right here is a is part of our handout. Some of the examples of things we've done, more examples, and um, just kind of a step by step of how it how a project looks with us. All right, um, I'm gonna try and shorten down the program today a little bit, but we are online. Um, I think the best thing to show you is our Facebook page um, just has updates and um, links to helpful resources. Oh, okay, forget it. <laughs> I'm gonna send read all these links. And we're also on our Housing Resources Bainbridge's website as well. And this is the independent living page again. So the, this is where you could find contact information for Julie or I. Again, examples of what we do, just a basic description of our program. All righty. And then um, we just to kind of clarify that we're talking about modifiable risk factors. Um, independent living addresses modifiable risk factors. We address factors that can be changed, that we do have control over. And that's what's so empowering about it is that there are there are um, tangible things we can do to prevent falls. Um, of course, there's non-modifiable risk factors as well um, that we can't control and we're focusing on the ones we can. So I'll, I'm, again, I'm just kind of zooming through things a little bit here. I'm about to get into the I spy part of our presentation. Does anyone first want to stop me um, with any questions or comments on what we've discussed so far? Cool. I'm, I'm just seeing my screen. I don't see anyone's faces, though. So, um, <laughs> I trust everyone's good. So this home um, is from an AARP article, and it's actually this couple had sent in photos of this home they either purchased or built, I'm not sure, to um, age in place. And so I really appreciate the approach on this home. And I'm going to ask that um, anyone unmute themselves and start to shout out um, things about this home that allow someone to age in place or things that um, modifiable uh, factors that have been changed to prevent falls. For some I don't of you, see any stairs. there's no stairs. Yeah, it's got, and I'm assuming we can't see the threshold, but I'm assuming it's a really low threshold, you know, into the home from the exterior. And this might be a repeat for some of you guys. A wheelchair. Mm -hmm. That's what I was going to say. It has a nice wide sidewalk so you can fit in wheelchairs or other, yeah, medical accoutrements. <laughs> okay, you can, see where you're, you can see where you're going, although there aren't bars along the walkway. All right. There you go. And there's a bit of a lip on that on that sidewalks, which make it a little difficult. You might slip off of that. Mm -hmm. I like the idea of the windows being as low as they are. That's from the inside concept. I love that. That every time we go through these photos with a new group, we want to find something new. I love that. Yeah, we've also got a really visible address for emergency services. Yeah. All right. So I'll move on. This one is kind of an example of some not like not the greatest approach to a home for aging in place here. Well, the stairs. Was the other home just a single story? I was going to say a single story is definitely better than a double story. Absolutely, and you you are correct. That was a single story. If you were in a wheelchair, there's no way you're going to get anywhere because number one, the sidewalk isn't continuous and you get to the stairs, you're, you're, you're sunk. Right, <laughs> we need, you need help at that point, exactly. 
I'd like to live there though. I like that porch swing. I know this is a rental in the Hamptons. <laughs> they, um, they also have, oops, where am I? They're lacking um, a rail you could actually uh, grab onto. This one is, you know, a handrail of sorts, but it's just not easy to grab onto if you were mid-fall, for example. So we always like the interior handheld rails as well. All right, let's keep going. Oh, this looks familiar. I love, I love this photo because basically it's to represent for each, to be ADA compliant for a ramp, for each inch of rise, you need one foot of length. So for let's say eight or 10 inches, you need eight to 10 feet for a ramp. So I just like to show people that if you do, or if you're thinking, oh, I'll just put a ramp in later, imagine how long it might have to be um, <laughs> if there's like five steps. All right. Okay, what's happening here? <laughs> a lot of stuff <laughs> absolutely there's a lot of clutter looks like uh, there's a lot of stuff that could fall out of the shelves there are open shelves things could just fall exactly a lot of open shelves any kind of an earthquake that place is going to be a mess <laughs> exactly that place is a mess <laughs> There's a real obvious fire hazard too because uh, you can see over the stove if you're cooking and need one of those utensils you could be you know you're potentially leaning over the stove or extending your arm with a long sleeve and um, that's a real fire hazard right there. Exactly. Also the garbage too. Mm -hmm. It looks yeah. like they're trying to recycle plastic bags though. It's true. The only thing to note about garbage is, um, and this is exterior as well, but um, yeah, attracting unwanted pests in the home too. <laughs> All right. So yeah, lots of obvious ones. Janine pointed out one of the ones I really like to make sure people see in this photo. And Janine could probably speak to this one too. <laughs> yeah. And we'll, we'll address that a little bit later, but clearly the obvious problem here is um, there's a lot of uh, tripping hazards. So that is, the, that is the, the biggest problem I see here is that um, there aren't clear and open pathways to get from one place to another. These people need to be told that you, they can donate their books to the senior yep. center. <laughs> <laughs> Even having a place on your t on a table or when you walk in to set things down, right? Like when you're bringing in things from out, like from the car or whatever. Having clear spaces. Well, it looks like they've got a, a, a set down table right there, but it's a little full. It's a little full, <laughs> exactly. All right. This one here is really to exemplify that because we've all all been in a galley kitchen before but that um if you're able you know to be walking in one it's not i'm not i'm not always thinking about if i had to um, use a galley kitchen in a wheelchair for example so this woman has to actually back in to access her um dishwasher this way um and I know Julie had another comment on this um, that I can't remember, but that's kind of the main thing, just to just to point out that, yeah, we don't always anticipate um, the ways we might need to use a space later in life. Well, the 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 um, microwave is too high for her. Mm hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, there's a lot about this kitchen that's not working for this person. Even the spices over there get really high. Right. Yeah, the space is over here. This is the same home um, from that AARP article. This is the kitchen. 
Yeah, what are they doing well? I, I like this kitchen. I love the pull-out drawers, the pull-out. In fact, I'm gonna have put a lot shelving put into our kitchen because, you know, getting down on the floor and getting the things in the back, ugh, just terrible. Oh, amen, exactly, All 100% to that. Yeah, the more drawers to um, replace, you know, just open cabinets with shelves, the better, mm -hmm. easier access. Obviously, you can get all the way around this if you have the space to have a island. I envy the space. But... <laughs> you have no backing in for the dishwasher here. Well, and then there's that uh, the shelf over on the left left hand side for person um, sitting down. Oh, or whatever. Yeah, I like it because it's it's basically an optional space, workspace, or eating space, I guess. You'd hope they'd all go sit at the table at that point. But um, Oh, yeah, you can, you can let it go down. Yeah, and that's what I like is that the, the, the people who purchased this home, you know, when they purchased, they're still able, you know. Um, they don't have any physical limitations, but they're just prepared for if, if they do later. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, I'll move on here. Oh, this bathroom, this is such a, we've like such a typical bathroom, um, but it is surprisingly uh, wrought with um, trip ha or, or fall, fall hazards. <laughs> yeah, no safety bars in that bathroom, in that sink or in the in this tub. Right, safety bars number one. Obviously getting in and out of the tub is a challenge. Oh, and, and then they have the uh, sliding doors. Right, so getting in and out made harder by sliding doors because your spa the space you have to work with is more limited. And then on the worst case scenario that, that you did have a fall in the shower, if those are glass doors, then there's the potential for further injury from broken glass as well. There's also, um, if, if you don't have grab bars installed yet, and I have been guilty of this myself, okay? There's totally a tendency to grab onto a, um, a towel rack. <laughs> so making sure that we're not using towel racks as grab bars is another one. All righty, I'm gonna move on here. Oh, I took this photo. This is at Coffee Oasis in Kingston and they have two bathrooms. Um, and what I loved about it is both bathrooms have grab bars and um, accessible uh, open sinks underneath. Um, I will say that the it's not a perfect it's not a perfect bathroom because I, I would like the mirror to come down all the way, um, and I'd like this uh, towel dispenser to be lower. But I was impressed to see to see these two things in in each bathroom, not just one. <clears throat> And then this is from a project that um, in the independent living program did. Um, this might have been a year ago, but um, this was not a walk-in shower before. It was, it was, you know, a tub shower combo, I'm pretty sure. And um, this, is the, this is what a walk-in tub looks like after installation with some grab bars. So you've got your grab bar for entrance, grab bar for multiple, you know, multiple sitting or standing over there. And I believe it's an adjustable shower head that's also helpful. So if you're sitting or standing in the shower, you could have the, the, the shower, the, excuse me, the spray as you want it. No place to sit down though. Yeah, you would, the, the, the shower chair you could bring in. It's just that way it gives um, someone the option to stand or sit. Yeah, so with, with a shower chair, then it's complete. All right, and that that's my that's my spiel here. This, this image here is just to say that at the Senior Center, um, I believe Julie dropped off multiple um, materials, and this one is your own, this is a guide for you to self-evaluate your home for any fall hazards, and we love this guide. 
Um, and I'm going to pause there. I'm going to stop there, you guys. Let me stop sharing my screen. Thank you guys so much for allowing me to talk about independent living and and what a what a project looks like. So, thank you, Irene. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, thank you. Irene. Yeah. So does any, so we're going to make sure that there's time at the end uh, for questions. Um, and I, and I want to make sure that we give Janine time to um, share some information as well, but any specific questions before we move on for Irene? Okay. Well, thank you, Irene. And I'm, if you'll stick around, I'm sure we will have some more questions at the end. Great. Thank you. Um, so now I'm going to go ahead and have Janine share a bit of information. I know she's got some good facts um, and just some more uh, ideas about safety, things to be thinking of. So Janine, uh, go okay. ahead and take it away. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thanks, Irene. That was, that was a great presentation. And uh, clearly, uh, uh, your objective is the same as ours at the fire department, which is, um, you know, helping folks to be able to live independently in their home uh, for as long as possible, if not indefinitely. And um, again, with with safety uh, being the key issue there. So uh, today, since we're talking about uh, fall prevention, I just wanted to share a few uh, statistics. Um, that are, are a little bit more current uh, that the fire department has. And um, so in 2019, we responded to 346 uh, falls for, for residents who were 65 or older. So 346, that's an average of almost uh, one a day. And that statistic is pretty consistent from, from year to year. Uh, another thing to note um, with, with uh, speaking of consistency is you would think that um, those falls might occur more maybe in the winter months when it's slippery outside, um, or maybe more in the summer months when folks are getting outside and moving around more. But the fact is, uh, those calls happen year round. They're not just clustered in, in certain times of the year. Uh, so what that tells us is that many of these falls are happening indoors. So, um, so uh, just a little bit more statistics. Um, of those 346 uh, falls uh, for seniors that we responded to in 2019, 56% uh, of those patients that we saw needed transportation to the hospital. So um, yeah, so that that's that's uh, kind of validating what uh, Irene touched on in the beginning, as did uh, some of the speakers in that great video, which is that uh, when an elderly fall, it can seriously impact their ability to continue uh, living independently. And uh, what the uh, doctor, what was her name? Uh, Andrea Apple said in the video, all those different um, types of injuries uh, that she mentioned, they see broken hips, you know, other broken bones, head injuries. Those are all the things that we see. So um, yeah, falling, falling obviously um, is very dangerous uh, for us as we get older. So um, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, when it's not COVID and when we have our program, when we can come in and do a home assessment for you, um, these are some of the things that we look for. It's um, more of the common reasons people do fall in their homes. Uh, one we've already talked about is having uh, handrails uh, throughout the home and specifically in the bathroom, uh, having cl uh, clean and opened walkways. So um, throughout your home, we find that a lot of people maybe are sitting at their table and if they get up, you know, to run to the refrigerator, go to the bathroom, um, grab the phone, moving quickly, you know, to go answer the phone, uh, you have some maybe um, walkways in your home that are, have things on the floor or um, throw rugs, scatter rugs. Those are huge trip opportunities. So um, please take a look around your home 
and, and see, do you have too much on the floor that may be impeding your you know, ability to move around really uh, freely and without hazard? The, um, the slip and trip and, and fall hazards uh, are just, the potential is so great, again, with those scatter rugs especially, or if any of you have any of those really nice, thick, dense um, area rugs, some of those are, are so thick that as we get older and maybe don't, you know, um, lift your foot so much when you walk, or if you're in house slippers, it's easy to kind of drag your feet. There's real potential for for, drip, for slipping or tripping um, over those that are that are nice and thick. So uh, with scatter rugs, either you know we recommend you removing them all together or making sure you anchor them down. There's all kinds of things, um, you know, no slip pads you can put under them or these uh, two-way sticky type. Um, things you can buy to hold the corners down. But again, that, that's something we look for and one of the more common reasons we see folks um, trip, slip, or fall. Uh, something you might not think about is your um, eyeglass prescription. Is it current? Sometimes your, your vision either starts to change, you know, very slowly and subtly, and next thing you know, your vision isn't as good as it, what it used to be. So we encourage you to, um, you know, visit your your um, ophthalmologist to make sure that your prescription is, is where it should be, um, as well as your medications. Sometimes we'll see folks who, you know, get lightheaded or they get a new medication introduced um, and, and that medication with an existing one they were taking doesn't quite jive and, and causes you to be lightheaded or dizzy. So you, you want to stay on top of your medications, make sure you're taking the right dose, make sure um, you know, one doctor is talking to the other and that those medications don't have uh, negative uh, interactions together. Um, also, things that may, may cause us to trip, slip, or fall are, as we get older, our balance uh, changes, muscle strength, you lose muscle strength. Again, the ability to walk um, like you used to, chronic illness. Those are some more reasons you might fall. And um, and that all sounds, you know, dire because we do see that a lot, but we all know that uh, slipping, tripping, falling, it, it, it's not an inevitable part of aging. And so what uh, we really like to promote is that, you know, motion is lotion, keep moving. Um, if, you, if you can, you know, don't be sedentary um, all day long, move a little bit every day. Um, I know that the Senior Center has some great online uh, yoga classes you can par participate in. Um, just just keep moving and, um, and get all your, again, medications, prescriptions checked. Make sure your home is safe to give yourself the best opportunity uh, to be independent. Um, I'd like to share my screen. So you've had a lot of information uh, today but I do want to share um, my screen, um, let's see, with you. It's the um, Bainbridge Island Fire Department website. And um, can you all see that now, our website? Okay, I'm going to go back to the home just so I can show you how to navigate here. So home across the top banner here, you'll see community risk reduction. And then the drop down, um, as you can see, we have a, a whole bunch of great um, information there. But if you go specifically here to the home safety and then down to fall prevention, um, everything you know between Irene um, and I, what we've talked about, it, it's all here. If you want to remind yourself some of the, the, the tips that we mentioned. And then down here, these are uh, links to some really great additional information for you. Uh, on our website here under the contact us, if you contact us via email, um, right there, just so you know, that goes directly to me. So if you want to follow up on um, talking more about um, some home safety, please feel free to, to reach out. So um, yeah, that's what, that's what we just wanted to again share with you that following um, is a reality in our community, but it certainly doesn't have to be. So thank you.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Janine. Um, really appreciate you sharing that information with us. Um, I will just add, Sheila just wrote in uh, about the SAIL program uh, from the Senior Center and uh, Kids at Physical Therapy. It's fantastic. She mentions aerobic, balance, et cetera. Um, so there are some really great programs uh, out there too uh, for uh, different acti physical activities that you can do. Um, I also see Reed is holding up some resources right now that are yeah, available. These are the, these are the, uh, the catalogs that, uh, that Irene was talking about that are at the Senior Center. You can just drop by and pick them up. It also includes Julie's contact information in a card. And folks, I am joining you. Hooray, Julie is here. Julie, welcome back. I was, I was ready to shoot myself. <laughs> I'm, bl I'm blaming all this on Google because <laughs> apparently, don't ask me about those steps, but it was not letting me have access. So it was horrible. And speaking of exercise and brochures, there are a stack of these. They accompany sale. And um, I don't know if you're seeing my image, but I'm holding this. No? No. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Let me jump. It says the camera's on. Hmm. Try hitting the uh, camera icon again, Julie. Okay, I'm doing it. Oh, and it looks like Reed is bringing in some more. <laughs> yeah, so here's more audio visual. <laughs> this is, these are the SAIL, Stay Active and Independent for Life Information Guide. Julie brought these by too, so you can ask for them at the front desk. We're open um, uh, Monday through Friday from 10 till 1. Uh, one is actually an exercise guide, and the other is just about staying active. So um, they accompany the sale program, and that's huge. Uh, I wish I had them for everybody. Um, I think there's about 25 people who come to that from time to time. Usually, when we have when we have it at the senior center, we have uh, you know. 15 people in in the view in Huni Hall um, but now because of the virus uh it's online and Leah's doing it from physical therapy um kids up physical therapy on Mondays and Fridays from 1 30 to 2 30 and it's the regular program that we had uh at the senior center uh it's just that we do it by zoom and it's absolutely fantastic so the routine is keeping going. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, same. Great. Well, That's great. I'm, Thank I'm, you, Sheila. I don't know if I'm joining in before or after the our little slideshow. Yes, yeah, so Irene did do the slideshow um, presentation um, and Janine just spoke as well. So if there's anything else that you wanted to add, Julie, um, we can also open it up to questions. Julie, well, I, I didn't talk about the proclamation. Ah, okay. Well, there's a governor's proc proclamation which came out come for this week and um, it talks about the statistics and the reality of um, maintaining ourselves and maintaining our resilience. And um, it's kind of grim to read this, but hopefully it promotes looking around and assessing your own environment at home and your access to your home. Um, just this last week, uh, independent living was working at a at a home requiring some serious changes because the homeowner had an injury and was having difficulty getting out to medical appointments afterwards. And the access to the home was inadequate for their needs. So we are making essential repairs with an independent living all this year. 
and we've had some difficult situations, people returning home after a stroke and expecting to rehabilitate there uh, without handrails, without grab bars, uh, that sort of stuff that makes rehab at home possible. And um, we had a client whose heat system failed and we were able to assist with that and a number of other situations. And we are very careful. We ask contractors involved to adhere to all the COVID recommendations, but um, covering Julie, the- Julie, do you work through the barn program for the ramps and the like? I'm not sure what you mean by the barn program. Uh, the, the, the it's a, it's a program on the island that ha, uh, has the um, different creative things that, that go on. Uh, one of the things that they used to do is they have done in the past is make r- ramps for people who yeah. needed it. The Bainbridge Artisans Resource Network. Barn. Thanks, Karen. Thanks. Sure. Mm-hmm. I didn't. I wasn't aware that they were taking on that kind of thing. Um, uh, because of COVID, right? How, how some of those requests are handled is kind of shifted. Um, there is a major organization that provided some of that. Their whole effort was ramps, and that was the Bo- Boeing Blue Bills, but they were accessed through Catholic Community Services. And we ourselves at Independent Living do provide ramps uh, when they're recommended. Um, We assess those situations. And if it's a qualified project, we find the contractor to do that work. Um, Right now, because Helpline is not welcoming visitors, they have closed their medical equipment offer a library that's what it basically is a medical equipment library and that has shifted to catholic community services because they are storing items on bainbridge island and they will facilitate um, helping people connect with that resource but it's no longer um handled through the helpline house so it's an important thing to talk about because it's so great to be able to access a a choice right here that may offer a wheelchair a walker whatever is needed on short notice so um i would be glad to help and connect people if they have that kind of need and uh, Catholic Community Services and Helpline would also assist with that. Thank so you, I wonder Julie. if there's more information people would like, just, just about an in-home assessment. Um, one of the things that Irene and I hope for today is that people will, um, carefully review their situation at home and take a look at things that are very inconvenient and we all put off. And as a result, uh, sometimes we suffer because of it needlessly. So if if the front steps need fixing, uh, if grab bars are called for, We had a lady this year who was rehabilitating from a stroke at home. Her laundry was in her crawl crawl space and cellar space. And there was no way she was going to be getting to that laundry without some assistance, without some new handrails. Um, Take a look at what you really need at home. If you have a resource for contractors you like to work with and maybe want some advice about um, 
general requirements for these kind of modifications. The uh, brochures which Reed held up can be very helpful to you. And if you would like uh, to call on us and get our view of uh, handling that kind of thing, we'll be glad to help. Thank you, Julie. And one thing that I did just want to um, ask or you know point out uh, both for Janine and Julie and Irene. Um, so for folks to reach out to you and get this information and, and you know look at doing an assessment and whether it's you know through a, a, a virtual call, a phone call, or you know in person, these are these are no cost services, correct for folks. So if you know Absolutely. that it shouldn't be a financial uh, you know decision that keeps you from looking at um, you know what sort of things can be done within your home. And please look out for your neighbors. If, if you can make a recommendation to them that will benefit them and improve things. Um, so often it is the front steps and the handrails. 